the Plotcast Podcast with the Potty Plotters. Well, hello and welcome back to the Potty Plotters Plotcast. I'm Elaine and I'm the big potty plotter. And I'm Julia and I'm the little potty plotter. And together we are the Potty, potty plotters. plotters. Now, I've brought that bit back in, actually, Julia, because we've had a complaint from Richard oh. in Derby and unfortunately the complaints department shut. Actually, it was never created, but he said he quite liked that little bit. I think he got confused as to which one's which and it's a reminder for him. So, Richard, you've got it back. Well, and you're big on everything, aren't you? <laughs> yes. Thank you for that, Julia. <laughs> Apart from tomatoes. <laughs> exactly. What a lovely link. Right, you are the queen of tomatoes. I've made you the queen of tomatoes. But before we get that far, haven't we got something else to say if people want to get in touch with us or something? Yes. Uh, welcome to episode 10. Remember, I'm on the evens, you're odd, which we've already worked out. <laughs> yeah. And uh, if you've only just come across us, well, hit that follow button. Apparently, the follow button's more popular than the subscribe button. So follow us. And you can find out what we've been up to so far. Lovely. Getting on to this episode then, Julia. Today we're going to be talking about tomatoes and football. Now, I know, it's true. But what we've got to do is somehow get a link in here. Uh, Similarities between tomatoes and footballs... Well, mine are as big as footballs. Oh, ark at you. (laughs) Ark at you. Uh, you. Uh, I suppose if we were playing that blow football... Uh, I don't know if that's Yours still... Yours are but yeah. <laughs> Mine are that's tiny. Oh, is that a game? Yeah. Are we allowed to say it? Yeah, because we're... Yeah. Sabutio, you mean. Oh, that's it, yeah, 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 where they flick it and all yeah. that. Mine yeah. are little tiny ones that I grow. Yeah. So the first thing that we need to know is, how do you grow tomatoes and how are you so successful, Julia? Because it's fair to say that you're excellent at growing tomatoes and it's fair to say as well that a lot of people come to have a look at what you've got in your polytunnel as the season progresses. So let's start at the very beginning. I was going to burst into song and <laughs> no, I st- you were. <laughs> I know, I saw that one coming. Thank goodness she hasn't. Yeah. <laughs> right then, you've got some multi-purpose compost at the side of you. You've got lots of trays and you've also got recycled materials as well in front of you. Yes, so I've got our recycled fruit tray that we normally use to plant in, our multi-purpose compost and I've got a selection of tomatoes here alongside me because there are hundreds, literally hundreds and hundreds of varieties of tomatoes and that is really the beauty of growing your own because you'll have a limited amount of choice in the supermarkets wherever you buy them from, whereas if you grow your own you can grow all kinds of varieties, all kinds of colours, all kinds of shapes. You can grow them in hanging baskets, you can grow them in the ground, you can grow them on the windowsill. There is a tomato, I believe, for everybody. So what we've got to do is to make sure that people get the right tomato for the right place or container. Because if we were to grow, for instance, a cordon tomato in a hanging basket, well, it would be a sight for sore eyes. It's not going to work, is it? No. And conversely, if we've got bush tomatoes in our plots, that's really not a good thing to do either. So how do we actually find out what's right for us? Right. So let's go back to what you've mentioned. You've just kind of cross-referenced two things. So you've got the determinate tomato, which is the same as you may see it advertised as a bush tomato. And they are tomatoes that don't involve any pinching out and normally they only grow to about two or three feet maximum and the beauty of them is that there really isn't much to do other than plant them and water them and give them an occasional feed. So for a learner that is the perfect tomato plant to start with? Yes and usually they are ones that are grown outside rather than inside so you know for perfect for hanging baskets you can get varieties at Tumbling Tom if you wanted to grow them in tubs we've we've grown a really uh, good variety called Muscota in the past which were really well in tubs the only problem with the determinant tomato is they do tend to ripen all at once whereas if you're growing them on a cordon or an indeterminate tomato which are the ones that you pinch out you do get a longer span of the tomatoes fruiting and ripening so depends on the conditions depends what you've got and the space that you've got to grow them the important thing to remember is tomatoes love sunshine so probably that's why I'm attracted to them. 
Well, I always grow a very tiny variety and they're tiny both with the tomato and also the plant itself. Only grows to about 12 inches. Oh. Lovely to put on a windowsill in the kitchen, easy to grow. And again, no pinching. There's no, we used to pinch one another as kids, you know. Oh, you were nasty, girls. weren't you? <laughs> yeah, it just reminded me. Yeah, we used to get told off for it and we used to squeal a lot. But anyway, we're not going to do that in here. So... Pinching things out, that is something that we'll talk about in another podcast later on because the first thing that we need to do, Julia, is having chosen our varieties that we're going to grow both outside, on the plot and also in hanging baskets and also on the windowsills and also in our greenhouses and polytunnels, what do you do first? So if we're planting our tomato seeds, let's think about where we're going to grow them first. So if we are going to grow them outside... We don't want to go too early. Do that about eight weeks before the last frost is due because you can't put them outside until the frosts have gone because these are very sensitive plants. So leave it a little bit longer if they're an outdoor variety. If they're an indoor variety and you've got access to a greenhouse or polytunnel, now is the perfect time to be planting them. And as we know, I love my massive, massive Beefmaster tomatoes. And that's what people come and gawp at in the polytunnel they're enormous and every year more and more people want them so I think I'll have to have another polytunnel to it's grow even to more. You just reminded me Julia that last year you had to put your bra, well not the one that you're wearing but you had to put <laughs> your bra underneath um, some of your tomatoes didn't you to support them? Yes because they are quite big and I've actually built some scaffolding now in my polytunnel to support them because they are so enormous. Not everybody has to grow the enormous tomatoes, lots of standard varieties like your money maker, your Alicante, they are your standard tomatoes that you would buy in the supermarkets. But of course, there's nothing tastes better than off the plant themselves in the sunshine. But we start them all the same way. So I've got our little uh, plastic tray. We've got the compost. I'm just going to give it a squirt with our sprayer to dampen the compost. And the reason we do this before we plant anything with small seeds is so that once we have planted the seeds we don't want them all collecting together afterwards if we're using the watering can i can't get in this the scissors are at the back of you julia Thank before you, you uh Break rip my teeth. Your teeth. yeah <laughs> <laughs> i'm not onto false ones yet teeth that is <laughs> or anything there's nothing false about me yet um so this is quite a smallish tray so again it's like planting the um pepper seeds and the aubergine seeds i'm going to leave about an inch between each seed that i'm planting and the reason we're doing that is once they've grown i want to be able to lift them out and move them onto new compost into yeah. their own little plant pot and i don't want to be disturbing the roots of the neighboring tomato so that is all i'm going to do and then i'm <laughs> I'm looking because was that just four that was in that just, packet? No, no, this oh, right, in the sorry. packet. <laughs> oh, oh, that's very expensive. Talking <laughs> of which, how expensive are tomato seeds to buy, Julia? Again, that can de depend on the variety. So if you want something more specialised, you, you do sometimes only get six in the packet, but then you are getting a very specialised variety, something a little bit unique. So, you know... Probably they would all germinate. And if you want something a bit different, we tried a, a black tomato one year, didn't we? But mm. we weren't that keen on it because we couldn't tell when it was ripe. So you had to keep going and giving it a squeeze. But this packet's got 30 in. And I know that other people have asked me for the Beefmaster tomato. So because of the size of the tray, which is, I would say, about six inches by two, <laughs> I will uh, probably plant about 10 in here and then plant some more in, in more trays. But, uh, but yeah. And do you leave them open on the top or are you going to put some more compost over the top? Again, like we, we do with all our seeds, we're just going to put a thin sprinkling of compost on the top. So twice the depth again of the seed. And then what we'll do is spray them and cover them over to keep them nice and warm. And these will come home with me and they'll sit on the windowsill at about 20 degrees and they'll germinate. Within about two weeks, they should be up and through. And then we'll be moving them on into their own bed. So into the their own uh, plant pot. In their pot. own plant pot. But the germination method for tomatoes is the same across the board, whether they're bush tomatoes, cordon tomatoes, big tomatoes, fat tomatoes, round tomatoes, yellow tomatoes, black tomatoes, or all tomatoes the same? No. 
Oh. No, they all taste different. They all taste different. So some are very sweet, some are very acidic, some are very juicy, some are very fleshy. So that, that is the beauty. And, you know, every year I try a new variety because I think it's worth experimenting with. So um, I've got one that I tried last year, which is beautiful, called Belladine, which is a plum tomato, but very similar in taste to the Beef Master. So again, we'll be planting some of those. But I don't think you can have enough tomatoes because they are so... Um, so much variety and they're in so much demand. I mean, we could become tom tomato barons or something. Like that. So get tomatoing, that's what I would say to people. Fill your window Absolutely. sills and make sure that you put a newspaper or a tray underneath the bottom of the containers so they don't leak everywhere in case they do. Yeah, and listening to us on, a, on another broadcast that we're going to do later on, and we're going to talk about how you get tomatoes from a tomato. Tomato plants from a tomato. It must be a tomato joke, but I can't think of one. I won't then. No, don't. All right. The Plotcast Podcast with the Potty Plotters. What have you been up to this week then, Julia? Well, while you've not been in, while you were at home being lazy, I've been in the muck heap. And guess who I met in the muck heap? Roland. I did. Mr Rat I stuck his name out there. at me. I knew Just that stuck he'd his been there because out. I saw all the muck the other side. When yeah. I say muck, he's like shoveled it out, hasn't he? He has, and he had the cheek to stick his nose out at me. Now, I don't want to kill him, but we are evicting him. So slowly, slowly, we are removing his home and he will be away then. That's not a bad thing. Well, I'll tell you what I've been up to. I really have been clearing out my greenhouses ready for the onslaught of everything that's going to go in there. By crikey, it's so hot. You know, you only need a little bit of sunshine, don't you, before you start to work up a, a sweat. Have you ever done that? No. No, I didn't no, think no. you had. No, no well, anyway, no. I do. But no. uh, it comes from barrowing muck from one side of this plot to the other. But it seems to have worked. Yeah. And I can see from sitting here where we are in the tangerinery that my greenhouse is actually sweating oh look can you see all the sweat dripping on the inside <laughs> it's because there's hot muck in there lovely lovely and while you've not been here as well tell you what else i've been up to i've been tidying my front garden at the allotment uh, so of course i've got one side that's full of perennial flowers which we love all the kind of ones that the bees love and i have been very good and i've left it over the winter for the habitat for all the insects but now i've noticed all the shoots are coming through from the uh, plants so i've taken down and removed all the old uh, dead shoots now and, and leaves so that i'm prepared for the coming season plus i don't want to give um, the slugs and snails a habitat now so if you want to get in contact with us with any questions, we're quite happy to give us a go and, and try and answer them. I mean, we could answer personal problems, I suppose. But if you've, we have had a question and I think it's garden related. though. It certainly it? is. Yes. And it's from Alison. And she said that she tried to grow parsnips last year and she was thrilled and delighted because they germinated. She thought that they were growing, but when she dug them up, they'd forked. F-O-R-K-E-D. And that means, Julia, yes. that generally speaking, instead of getting one taper root, so yep. one long root, as we recognise parsnips, yep. unfortunately, it had all gone very, uh, like, lots of fingers and lots of things right. growing instead. So if you wanted to enter that in a competition, you'd probably win <laughs> as a kind of uh, unusual veg competition. But the reason that that's happening is because you've got too much fertility in the soil and possibly you've not cleared it of any stones or anything. So that's what causes them to fork. They don't like much f fertility in the ground beforehand. So if you're going to uh, put parsnips in a raised bed in the future, Alison, what I would do is don't muck it that year. Leave it and dig it and get the soil to like breadcrumbs, a fine tilt as fine as you possibly can. And I think that should solve your problems. Contact the Potty Plotters anytime on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram at Potty Plotters or email naughtycorner at pottyplotters.uk. So we've come 
out for the day alone. We're here at a different allotment site in Derby and we've come to meet with the Derby County Community Trust. Now I've been practicing my dribbling and you've been <laughs> <laughs> and you've been practicing in goal, haven't you? Because we thought we were coming on the subs bench. Yeah, well, I don't mind doing that because I've got my tape measure in my pocket as well, and my plan is actually to dig up that football pitch and start everybody growing their own. I think it would be more fruitful than what they do there currently maybe don't Makes know sense. but i think these will argue it don't you and today i am with wilco and also danny wilco what are we doing here besides talking to you obviously uh, so you're at our i wouldn't say brand new allotment it's been going for two and a half years now and danny to the right of me is our newly full-time created green activities officer at the trust at the Trust, but at we're at trust. an allotment site. It's not football here, is it? No, no, that's the thing. Everyone sees Derby County Community Trust as football and going to schools and the next budding footballer, but as a health department, we've taken on lots of different activities and the green side of the club now um, is where you are today. So hopefully this is the start of some new beginnings at the Trust and also the football club. But you said that normally you do football -y sort of stuff, and yet this is an allotment site. What's your plan to do here? Physical activity, obviously physical activity is part of everything we do. Um, get people out, out and about different and have a look that actually anybody can come on an allotment site because there's that myth that you've got to be over 70 years of age. Um, you, you've you, got to wear a cap. Yeah, yeah, you've got to wear a cap. You've got to have some sheep and and, 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 a, and a stick and, and, and that's where you come on. But I think we've changed it really, that the age demographic, yeah, we have older people coming up, but like so me, Danny, Lucas outside working just shows anyone can get their hands dirty and try and grow something and the main aim is to give back the produce back to the community as part of the living crisis so as well as our participants getting food we're giving it to food for thought food banks and our lunch club that we deliver as well so it's quite a, a big ambition very some yes. would say so danny how do people get involved with the allotment do they just contact derby county community trust and say i want to come on your allotment yeah exactly so anyone that's interested can come along uh like i say it's for anyone doesn't matter what age race anything they are um and then we've got a website so there'll be a brand new uh, web page on there for the green activities coming along soon and there'll be a contact us form so if anyone's interested they can just fill that out and then that'll come through to ourselves and uh, we can get in touch and get them down here and get growing brilliant and you've got a lovely big shed that we're sitting in in fact it's the summer house it's very posh isn't it Elaine? i was gonna like say it. it's a lot more that's a shed <laughs> down there yeah. I, can't, I can't fit in this is it's this very is posh. This, this is very posh very, very posh, posh very posh and um you've got a full-sized allotment really um so what is the plans that people just come spend half the time just sitting around drinking coffee and then the rest of the time outside growing <laughs> yeah uh, so they're going to follow sort of a little bit of a structure so for the ones that are a bit more physical there will be a nice warm-up to first to get everyone into it about an hour's worth of different activities if it's digging or sowing some new seeds or pulling some veg up and then we'll have a nice social element for about 30 minutes long and then do a little bit more and then nice cool down at the end so everyone's going home uh, not not pulled any backs so or I wake up the next morning and can't get out of bed uh, and that's sort of twice a week at the moment and how long are those sessions for um two two hours at the minute but we'll probably go up to three soon right and will you have a sports therapist kind of massagey person on hand <laughs> if anyone pulls anything we do have a holistic therapy uh, person at the trust so if anyone does they can be referred over to her I've just got visions of a giant parsnip being pulled out <laughs> and everybody pulling and tugging and shoving. All I'm going to say is that allotments really aren't very sexy and they were so very last year. So what has made you come to allotments and getting involved in them? We're going to go back to during the COVID times. So we got a pot of funding from the EFL Trust that was from DCMS, Public Health, to work with people who are socially isolated. So at the start of COVID, it was getting them online, getting them food parcels, and then they go, right, if you want to have more, we can give you a pot of money to make it sustainable because we're coming out of the pandemic. That's what they thought, but obviously we didn't come out dingy. So I just went, let's get an allotment. And everybody at the trust, my line manager, our health and safety were going, Wilco, what, you're gonna get an allotment. I was like, just, I need to get out of the house. I need the project. So we came up here, and it was just, we just tried it out. We just did a few bits and bobs. People started believing in us. We were, we were making space. They started coming in, take, bringing participants. It was a really good thing for them. And then we got to a point where we either give it up or we bring some actual 
trained personnel and people with knowledge to take it to the next level. So I think what's really cool for me is we laugh and joke and everybody laughs at the trust going Wilco in allotment, you can't grow anything, is actually I've got it to a point where we can make it a lot more than just an allotment. And that, it's really exciting, as you can see, like obviously the listeners can't see, they can hear, but <laughs> it's, um, oh I'm, re- I'm really excited. Like it's just nice, that like, this here, coming up at Christmas when this was up, it was just nice, it's the next step. And working with you guys as well, giving us that knowledge and what we need. So exciting times ahead. I think Danny doesn't know the headaches that's gonna come and you're gonna have disappointment. There's gonna be bad days. There's gonna be people not happy, but it no. is what it is. So it's no different to football then, is no, it? No, no, you can't win. You have no, good no. winning streaks and things will grow. So that's a good thing. We've had, we have been really lucky, but we know this year we're probably going to get to a point where things aren't going to grow as much as we want. But yeah. that doesn't mean we've failed. It just means we've got to do something different, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah you just learn, don't you, go as you go along, learn what works. Um, I've not been on this site while we've been growing stuff, no. so we'll just see what works as we and go what along. what is your plan? Because, I mean, you've got, as Julia said, a full-size plot out here, and it will take some work, but it will also be fantastic if you've got lots of different people supporting this as an adventure. So what is your plan? Because I can see that you've got somebody out there putting up a polytunnel. We have got this Ginagora shed, um, for want of a better word, and um, loads of paths, loads of muck, it looks like, and soil all being piled up outside. Yes, yeah, so we've moved some beds around because they weren't quite working how we wanted um, and we also want to make it wheelchair and disability access friendly so we're going to have raised beds um, so obviously you can get into them a bit easier warms the soil up, we can get going a little bit earlier on in the year um, and now decent paths everywhere uh, we also want to incorporate making our own compost so there'll be that the other side as a polytunnel uh, along with a bug hotel as well so that's really exciting and then sort of we've got um, a kids group um, as part of it who are going to be coming down in the summer holidays Easter holidays uh, so they'll have their own area where they can grow stuff uh, they can then because some of these kids probably haven't even tried fresh tomatoes off of a plant so they can do all that sort of stuff here at the allotment in the Easter holidays and you plan to be here full time by the sound of it um, two two days here definitely minimum <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then just see how it goes to see see what needs doing and you've just taken on another plot at another site in Derby as well. So you're going to split your time between the two of them, or is it two days here, two days over there? Yeah, yeah, but two, two here, two there for our participant side. Um, and then the idea at the other plot will be to, it'll be all bare ground, just grow, f- purely focused on growing as much as we can. I feel like Wilco said, to donate to the uh, Food for Four and the different food banks. And then here will be our flagship site where it's a little bit more developed um, and a bit more accessibility. And some would say that this is just a fad. You know, Derby County, yeah, football club, yeah, get an allotment because that's what everybody does. It gathers momentum, it gets the headlines. Why is it that you've come for an allotment? Because that's very different to any other green space that I would imagine Derby County have got at the minute. No, I agree. Uh, and it, I think it was a bit of phase at the time and we kind of thought, let's create something and not just tick a box. That's really, um, that's the work we've done is more than ticking a box. But I think now we're at the point where we can link within the city's needs. So the city's needs after COVID. So what we didn't want to do as a club and a community trust was just go, here's some food parcels because it's been COVID. It's going, actually, how can we respond after COVID? So we now know we've got a green site we're not the only one across the city we're one of many but we're linking out to social prescribers gp surgeries i've got a meeting with the library because we know the libraries are going for the issues of shutting down can we turn this into a green library once a month for the community to access so it's going to be a lot more than an allotment but on an allotment site if that makes sense so i think that kind of gets away of our oh, derby county are just doing it to tick a box and be green we want to prove them wrong a little bit and it's nice when you prove someone wrong that actually not you know what you're doing, but you've got something that's got a lot of legs here. I mean, and if I ever left tomorrow, Danny's got it. If Danny left, then someone else could just take it over. So yeah. um, that's talking, the aim. Talking about a lot of legs, yeah. have you got any of the footballers coming down to do any work? Um, we're just trying to work with them now. So the new manager in charge is really keen on getting them out into community activities and different to schools holiday courses because that's great but what can the footballers see that we're doing so we're we're trying to get them here but the only problem is our sessions are on a monday and a wednesday 
they like to have a Wednesday off. So we're trying to work on. Yeah, they, they get a day off. A yeah, day they get off. A, the way you looked at them. Oh, they're doing is running around after a ball for goodness, oh, goodness sake. sake. Yeah. Well, they could start, couldn't they, by digging a bit yeah. of that pitch up? And I bet nobody would <laughs> even know. Yeah. Bet you. Mm. Have you had a word with them? I mean, our first thought when when we uh, connected with you was, mm. what could we snaffle? To be honest with you, what can we snaffle from uh, Derby County? So, have you uh, collected any of them corner posts or any of the? The nets. Or nets the nets or anything. Would be perfect. Yeah. Be We've got ideas yeah. for all things kinds of things. So have you been in their so, store cupboard? So, so we've had an initial conversation with them because we can't just take things. That's oh. frowned upon. We can't oh. just take things. So what we have been told at the end of the season, we can go up and if the groundsman says that net's not being used anymore, we can. But if the groundsman says that's got another 12 months left in it, we can't take it or start growing stuff on it because it won't look great when they play on a Sunday or a Saturday when they train but the, the, the club are fully behind it I think what we've just got to do is listening to something like this and showing the new boards because the new owner's brilliant what we're trying to do is just bringing that ethos across the whole club we're not trying to be a forest green because we're nowhere no. near that forest no. not, not actually Don't not in forest that. no forest green the green uh, the green football club the greenest football club in in europe um, we're trying to just change a few habits for supporters and stuff like that so i can see some lovely sweet peas growing up that net in there well, I've actually thought about those corner flag things because if you put a few of them together, you could grow your beans up there. Yeah. 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 Are we going to turn Derby County green instead of black and white after all? Mm, I think we'd be in trouble. They'd kick off. <laughs> yeah, they, 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 uh, yeah. Even Danny's not even mentioned that turning the badge green. Um, but I'm sure they'll give us something. They will give us something. They, they won't, will, yeah. Yeah, they will. They will give us something. And I think what's really cool as well, not to keep droning on with my voices we're just having some new logos green logos for the trust so it really identifies what we're trying to do so you've got the derby county community trust logo but we're turning it green thanks again to uh, danny and wilco from derby county community trust right then what we're going to do now is we're going to just do a little bit more about our hints and tips we said that we'd give them every time we do a podcast and now is the time for us to carry on with them julia i have got a net here now, this, most people would remember by Enid Sharples, if you remember her. I'm just <laughs> yes. saying, because you are that age. And she used to wear this kind of thing on her head. Well, my shallots actually came in this. You can get tangerines in it, or- orangeries, orangeries, <laughs> oranges. <laughs> That's because we're in the tangerinery, <laughs> right. isn't it? <laughs> Anything like that. And why it is that we want you to keep them is because these will support your melons in the future and also tomatoes too. I've definitely seen these wrapped around your melons, Julia. So if you're buying things from the supermarket currently, put these all on one side, keep them. They will come in useful. Thanks again for listening to us on this episode. And if you like what you've heard, don't forget to press that follow or subscribe button and you can find us on our normal social channels. In the next episode, we're going to be talking about barrows and blooms. So to find out more, then you'll have to tune in because we're not going to tell you otherwise and you won't find it written down anywhere. It's all a big secret, really, isn't it? The Plotcast Podcast with the Potty Plotters is an Amberland Media production.